Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School lesson for the week of October the 25th here at the First United Methodist Church in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Larry Williams for teaching the last couple of weeks while I was out of step. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And this week, we turn our attention to communion and to claim the sacrament of communion as an indispensable means of grace that blesses us on multiple levels. Our background, our, our lesson today will be found in Luke 22, 14 through 20. So I encourage you to get your Sunday school book, get your Bible, get them open to it. And let's first turn to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this word that comes to us from Luke. We thank you, Father, for the lesson of communion, for the unity it is supposed to bring. We ask you, God, to guide us and strengthen us, strengthen our resolve to be your people and to do your will. We thank you, Father, for the offering of forgiveness of our sins that you give us. We ask you, God, to help us to accept that. And now as we turn to our lesson, Lord, we ask that you open the eyes of our heart and let us hear the message that you have for us today. In Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. Well, today we will do, we will gather at the table, Christ's table. But can you recall a significant event that occurred at your home at the dinner table? We all have significant things that have happened to us around the dinner table. The dinner table is just an important part of our lifestyle, isn't it? It doesn't matter how busy we are. It seems that at, at the dinner table, we kind of gather together. One of the most, one of the biggest things that I that occurred in my life at the dinner table was when I told my parents that I was getting engaged to my present wife, to my only wife. It took them back a little bit. It was a little, I was a little young for that, they thought. But we got through it together and, and uh, it turned out well. So we find our scripture this morning in Luke 22 verses 14 through 20. I want you to think about the table and what it means to you. And I want you to think about the communion table and what it thinks to you. As we listen to Jesus's words as recorded in Luke, when the time came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles joined them. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I won't eat it. I won't eat it until it is fulfilled in God's kingdom. After taking a cup and giving thanks, he said, take this cup and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on, I won't drink from the, from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom has come. After taking the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal and said, This is my cup, the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. The word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Wow. It never fails to amaze me. As I study God's word, I learn something new. Something else is revealed to me. I never really realized that in Luke's version of the communion meal, that he offered the cup twice. First, it, it says that he, he, he offered the cup and gave thanks and said, share it among you. And then he gave the bread and gave thanks and then he took the same cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. 
So we see here that we can always learn something. We have always enjoyed many things that have happened at the, at the table. I almost taught this lesson today from the student book because it was an excellent, excellent lesson. I had not recalled the ending to the movie, The Places of the Heart. I would encourage you, if you have access to it, to rewatch that movie, as it is a wonderful story that strengthens our understanding of the communion, and it embodies the communion so well when, in the closing scene, we see reconciliation. And that's such a big part, a big part of the Sunday school, the communion experience. When we go and receive communion, we experience that interaction between and commitment to God, to Jesus, and giving thanks for that. But what do we leave at the table? Well, if we truly have communion, we leave our sins at the table. We leave our guilt at the table. We leave our shame at the table. And what does that do? It empowers us. It gives us the wherewithal that we can go and face the world and live boldly and courageously. And that is a real act. The tax collectors and the the tax collector, the Pharisees complained that Jesus ate with the tax collectors and, and others who were sinners, according to them. Well, let's look at the people who were at the table that night. There was Judas, who was on his way to betray Jesus. There was Peter, who by daylight would have denied him three times. And then there were those who were arguing among themselves about who is the right, who is the highest, who is the closest to Jesus and where they should sit. And, and if you read just a few more verses after uh, where we stopped our scripture today, that's exactly what you'll find. So who was at the table with Jesus? People just like you and me with faults, with uncomplete lives who have not completed yet that sanctification. When we think about this, we need to think about Luke began this story with, of course, the, the entry into, into Jerusalem. And we see that that uh, we see that Jesus had laid the groundwork and prepared them. He sent John and Peter into the city to prepare the meal. Uh, the time was right when Jesus entered Jerusalem. He was when he when he knew the time was right, he entered. And so it is when we eat commun when we take communion, the time should be right. How does the time get right? It gets right when we prepare our heart. I love the way that we receive communion in our hands, cupped. I love the way that, that we dip the bread into the wine in a communal way. And it's a shame that the whole Catholic Church, and by that I mean the whole body of churches, cannot share that together. Some churches interact one, one religion one with the other. One Protestant uh, will accept another Protestant. The Catholics don't accept anything except Catholics to take communion. I don't know why. That's, that's not in my pay grade. I, I'll worry about that another day. But isn't it a shame that we can't all come together on such a basic 
basic sacrament. There really we only recognize two sacraments in the in the Methodist Church. That's baptism and and the and the <clears throat> communion. So when we see that God starts, Jesus starts, the work that he did on the cross started here. Started right here with the communion. And he created this covenant with us. It is a indispensable means of grace on multiple levels. I, I love the way the student book broke it down into past and present and future divisions and celebrations. Uh, we should look back at that, and I, wanna, I want to call our attention to that uh, as we think about the celebration. Pardon me while I find the right lesson. If we turn to page uh, 70, uh, page 82, I want you to listen to the words as we contemplate this division that's, that's among us. I have no magic words or strategies that will help the church universal overcome our divisions over the sacrament that Jesus intended to create community and solidarity. We can rejoice in the fellowship experience in our congregation, denomination. That serves us for the present. We can anticipate the time when we will share the full fellowship with one another. That points us to the future. Wow. Let's now take a a few minutes and look at the communion and contemplate how it affects us. So, how does the sacrament of communion help you realize your identity in Christ? Mm. Which phrases from the communion liturgy are most meaningful to you? Do you find some phrases speak to you more profoundly at certain times than at other times? And yes, I think that's very true. There are those that uh, times when we come seeking forgiveness, realizing there's somebody I need to forgive. And other times we realize that that somebody is ourselves when we need to release that guilt that holds us back. At what point during the communion do you feel closest to Christ? And when do you feel connection with those around you? For me, it's when we when I'm standing in line and others are standing in line, and I realize that we are a church united. Uh, can you think of a time when the communion service made an impact on you. Maybe you left a great portion of your guilt at the table. Or maybe you forgave someone that you needed to forgive there at the table. Can you think of a time when the communion service made a real impact on the way you live? What were the circumstances? How did the sacrament provide a spiritual experience for you? In what way did the service help you recall the prior acts of God? You know, we could take communion and we could go all the way back to the Passover. And we could see that that's where God started planting the seeds of communion. The instruction for the Passover meal was that if someone's family was not big enough to consume a whole lamb, to share it with another family. The idea of sharing. Then we get to Paul when he addressed the Corinthians for the same thing. Paul scolded the rich Corinthians because they were not, they were flaunting the way they ate and drank at the communion meal 
and was not sharing that with the poor in the church. And Paul just called those folks out on that. Do we need to be called out for something? Is there something that we could be doing that we're not doing? As we think about communion, have you ever been to a service which you didn't think you were welcome to take communion by either what was said or by what was done? How did you feel? It is so uplifting to me for us always to emphasize here in the Methodist Church how open the table is to all because we're all sinners and we all need to celebrate. We need to celebrate this gift of communion. In what ways can our church make communion more of an act that breaks down barriers between people? Are there any divisions in our church that need correcting? How can the sacrament of communion help us to break down those divisions? Wow. What a strong lesson for us today. Some of the questions that were in the, in the teacher's guide are worth referring and thinking about for just a minute. How does the sacrament of communion help you realize your identity in Christ? Does it draw you closer to him? I certainly hope so. When, when the liturgy is read, which part is most meaningful to you? Can you remember a time when the communion service made an impact on you? Has it ever been a uplifting spiritual experience that even today you can recall? How can the sacrament of communion help us to break down divisions within our church body here, but within our church, the United Methodist Church? Listen to Listen to the prayer of St. Francis. O divine master, grant that I may not so, so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is, is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. What a great prayer. And now let's read the closing prayer together, located on page 83 of the student book. If you're at home, and I know you are because you're not here, I would encourage you to read it out loud as I do. We thank you for grace that you show in the sacrament of communion, O oh God. We thank you for forgiving our individual sins and for offering grace that can make us better people. We thank you for the grace that forgives the church for creating division where you wanted unity. Help us to share the fellowship with persons of other denominations. Give us an earnest desire to experience the full fellowship that you have waiting for us in the resurrection. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, this concludes our lesson this week. I hope it has given you cause. I hope you were at communion and took communion this week as we had two opportunities to do so. I thank you for watching. And as always, if there's anything that I can personally do to help you, please let me know. We greatly appreciate the comments that we have received in on about our our teaching and we look forward to seeing you next week in christ's name we ask these things amen